Yo, what's up guys, Professor here. And today I wanna talk about just one new tool that got introduced with FL Studio version 20.8 that I believe ImageLine released yesterday. It's called the Frequency Splitter. Now, this tool is actually gonna have a lot more applications than what I'm just going to show you today, but I wanted to introduce you guys to this concept because I thought it was really cool. And um, let's just hop right in. So the reason that I like Frequency Splitter is because obviously it has the ability to split frequencies, but it has the ability to send the frequencies to three different locations. Now let's just ignore frequency splitter for now. I'll show you guys what I have now without without any processing. Basically, I have a bass coming through here and being side chained to the kick. Uh, Fruity limiter is side chaining it. Of course, a little more interesting, but not nearly enough for anything. So let's talk, and this isn't a sidechain tutorial. If you guys want a sidechain tutorial, you could check that out over here. Let's continue. So open up a new instance of Frequency Splitter. It's right over here under new. And let's check this out. Frequency Splitter is nice because of its ability to split frequencies. and monitor them and boost them and changing uh, different things. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to use it to send two different frequencies to two different mixer tracks that I have set up here. So let me pull that over there. And that's set to loop, okay, good. So check this out. Let's take a look here. I'm gonna change my slope to 96 and I'm going to pull the band back to around, let's pull it back to around like 140, 145. Sounds good. So let's check this out now. What we got going on here. That's good, but what next? Well, basically I had this bass running to a plugin called Stutter Edit that I really like uh, by Isotope. So let me run that to its spot over there. All right, we have stutter at edit heading to, all right, good. The bass is heading to stutter edit. And I'll show you guys how I've been using this here. Um, of course, I'm using my MIDI controller to control stutter edit. Anyways, so I was like, that's, cool, but I don't want my sub bass and a lot of the lower ends going through that. And I want my uh, lower ends to be monoed as well. So what I did was I sent, or well, Serum was on that bass thing that was being, of course, uh, limited, uh, side-chained. I took Frequency Splitter, and what you can do, something really cool here, is you can send these two different tracks. Now, these will not be ready to send. Yeah, you're gonna actually have to go down here first and highlight the track that your bass is on. And then you're gonna need to right click the tracks that you wanna send it to and click side chain to this track. I'm gonna do it to two different tracks. Now that you've done this, when you go to your send area over here, it'll show more option than just one. If you don't, haven't sent or side chained this to a track, you're only gonna go see one and it won't go to more because you haven't sent the information anywhere. One is actually registered as where the plugin is on. So what you need to do is send them to like two and three. I'm gonna send two and three because my high band is this. So I have my high activated and my low activated. Now let's solo them out just to, uh, let's monitor what's coming in and let's monitor the low and the high. Let's take off the sends. That's good, that's my low band. Let's check my high band. All right, good, that's perfect. Now you're gonna need to take these and turn them off. I'm gonna monitor my sends. I'm gonna click this and I'm gonna turn these on. Now check this out. We have these being sent to separate mixer tracks now. And this is fantastic because I can mix them differently. I'm gonna use our bass to add uh, some more low, some saturation to the low end. Let me show you. That gives it way more rumble. 
And now I can run Stutter Edit 2 on the high end, but it's not going to mess up my sub bass, which I want to sound more steady. I want the effects to really just hit the grind up here. Let's turn on the low, let's turn on the low band and listen. Oh, and let's mono, let's merge the low band completely so we don't get any phasing. That's pretty cool. Uh, now the next thing I did actually was I went ahead and unsent these to the master and actually re-merged them here in another track that I made. So go over here, boom. Now, in here I'm running distortion uh, and Maximus to make it louder. Let's check this out. Basically right now, this is just as if it would be sending to the master. But let's add Tantrum. And with this, I've also linked some controls here too. I've linked my uh, knob to the type of uh, distortion and like the filter of it. And I've linked the output mix so I can kind of turn it off and on. Now, let's just turn on Maximus, which I went ahead and went to the preset max loudness. And let's just turn the pose down. Let's just turn this down a little bit. Let's turn that. And let's do, let's do that. Okay, good, good, good. That should be better. Now, watch as I'm able to use these tools to like their max benefit because I was able to use Frequency Splitter to send to these new tracks. one small creative way to actually use these. Of course, there's still so many possibilities that you can do with Frequency Splitter and with the other tools, but this is more of a Frequency Splitter tutorial and how useful it can be. Also, Frequency Splitter is gonna be useful for mastering, uh, mixing, uh, passing bands, things like that. It's kind of like Maximus, but with a little bit different potential, which is really nice. I'm glad they put this in here. If you got, I like Frequency Splitter for the send. There was other ways to do this in FL Studio up until now, but this makes it really easy. Uh, so that's one thing I wanted to introduce you guys to. Uh, another thing I like about it is the uh, linear phase, but linear phase isn't too important. Um, basically, linear phase filtering just tries to preserve waveforms and time and preserve like the time that all your audio is coming out uh, to so that you don't get phasing or distortion or like canceling from audio waves. But even if like you're not using a linear phase plugin, the effects are probably barely even noticeable and oftentimes like they can be pleasant. Uh, if you really want to understand more about linear phasing, I'll make a video on that. Uh, but linear phase is a really complicated concept. Uh, it's going to be pretty boring, but it could be interesting if you're into some, if you're into audio like that. So let me know in the comments below if you want a video on what linear phase is. Basically, just think of it as trying to preserve your original sound as much as possible. But it's not always ideal, and it can uh, deal with delays, things like that. Um, but those are my two favorite things about this frequency splitter right now. Um, and I really like this new tool. If you guys want to see more applications for this tool, let me know, and I'll go ahead and make another video demonstrating more applications for frequency splitter, like in mastering, in mixing, in filtering, in boosting, things like that. And also these presets in general are going to be really helpful for the things that you need.
Guys, thank you so much for checking out this video. If it was helpful and you enjoyed it, please leave a like and uh, subscribe for more content. There's always more tutorials and music and even music videos coming to the channel as well. Uh, I'll be sure to get back to your comments as soon as I can. Don't forget to follow your boy on the gram. Check it out. That helps me out a lot uh, as far as subscriptions and bells as well. Guys, thank you so much for checking out this video. It means a lot to me. I'm glad you were here and uh, I hope you found it useful. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Keep grinding. This has been Professor and uh, catch you next time. Peace.